Welcome to the course on numerical lean algebra and application. Today we are going to have 28th lecture in continuation to the previous lecture. In the last lecture we spoke around two methods and the one most important one which is being left out is the divide and conquer method. In this method as the title suggests this method is based on the divide and conquer principle. The algorithm first divides a given symmetric tridiagonal eigenvalue problem into two similar sub problems and then combine the solutions of the sub problem to recover which we call it as conquer the solution of the original problem. The method was originally suggested by Coupin in 1981. The method can be used to compute all the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix and it is faster than the symmetric QR iteration method just described we present here a very brief sketch of the method. Suppose that the symmetric matrix A has been transformed to a symmetric triadagonal matrix T by an orthogonal similarity and let T is equal to A1, B1, 0, 0, 0, B1, A2, B2, 0, 0, 0, like that. So that is the main diagonal, subdiagonal, super diagonal, rest are all zeros. We define a matrix T1 that is A1, A2, A3, etc. and B1, B2, B3, Bk, etc. And we write T2 as Ak plus 1 minus Bk, Bk plus 1, 0 like this. Similarly, second, third and uh, last row. Then we can write T is equal to T1, 0, 0, T2 plus Bk times of V times of V transpose where V is equal to 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 transpose. Since T1 and T2 are symmetric tridiagonal, we can find orthogonal matrices Q1, Q2 in such a way that T1 is equal to Q1 times of D1 and Q1 transpose and T2 is equal to Q2 times of D2, Q2 transpose where D1, D2 are diagonal matrices. Then capital T is equal to Q1, 0 and 0, Q2 multiplied with D1, 0, 0, D2 plus Bk times of U into U transpose. That is multiplied with Q1 transpose, 0, 0, Q2 transpose. So in the similar fashion, where this Q1 will have the form Q1 transpose 0, 0 Q2 transpose. Therefore, the eigenvalues of T are the, are the same as those of D cap. That is D plus Bk times of U U transpose. Then it will become what we call D plus rho U into U transpose. Where D is given by this matrix. D1 0. 0, D2. 
and rho is equal to b comma k. We therefore concentrate now on how to obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the rank 1 Petrovod diagonal matrix. D cap is D plus rho times of u u transpose. Assume without any loss of generality that norm of u2 is equal to 1 and rho is equal to bk which is not equal to 0. Let d is the diagonal of the elements d1, d2, d3, dk and assume that d1 is less than d2, less than d3 like this and none of the components of the vector is 0. In fact, a 0 component of u is a blessing in disguise. We can show that in this case we get an eigenvalue and eigenvector pair free. Also, if k eigenvalues of d are equal, then the problem can be deflected by deleting k minus 1 rows and k minus 1 columns. To support this, let q k be an eigen pair of d cap. Then we show that lambda is a root of the equation 1 plus rho into u transpose times of d minus u lambda i whole inverse of u is equal to 0 and q is equal to d minus lambda i whole inverse of u is an eigenvalue of d plus rho into u u transpose corresponding to lambda. To show 1, we note that lambda comma q is an eigen pair of d cap. We must have d plus u d plus rho times of u u transpose multiplied with q will be equal into lambda q for some q not equal to 0. That is d minus lambda i times of q will be equal into minus rho times of u transpose q times of u. Now our assumption that rho not equal to 0 and d1 less than d2 less than d3 less than dn and that none of the components of u is 0 implies that d minus lambda i is non-singular and u transpose of q is non-zero. Multiplying by d minus lambda i whole inverse then we will have this mat this form q is equal to minus of rho times of u transpose q multiplied with d minus lambda i whole inverse of u. So proceeding like this, multiply both sides of equation 3 by u transpose and dividing by the non-zero scalar u transpose of q, then we will end up with this equation. That is 1 plus rho times of u transpose multiplied with d minus lambda i whole inverse will be equal to 0. To show second one, we note that d plus rho times of u u transpose multiplied with d minus lambda i whole inverse will be equivalent to d minus lambda i plus lambda i plus rho times of u u transpose multiplied with d minus lambda i whole inverse of u. Then you can write it as u plus lambda times of d minus lambda i whole inverse of u plus u times of rho u transpose d minus lambda i whole inverse of u. Then third one is u plus lambda times of d minus lambda i whole inverse of u plus u times of minus 1. The fourth one is u plus lambda times of d minus lambda i whole inverse of u which will be equal to lambda times of d minus lambda i whole inverse of u. 
locating the roots of equation 1, we note that 1 plus rho times of u transpose d minus lambda i whole inverse is equal to 0 can be written in terms of the components of u i of u as follows. f lambda is equal to 1 plus rho times of u transpose d minus lambda i whole inverse of u will be equal to 1 plus rho times of summation j is equal to 1 to n u square j upon d minus dj minus lambda is equal to 0. This equation is usually known as the secular equation. Again, because dA's are all distinct and none of the components of u is 0, we can show that f lambda is equal to 0 has precisely n roots. 1 in each of the interval dj comma dj plus 1 for i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 and to the right of dn if rho is greater than 0 and one of the left is di if rho is less than 0. And in continuation to that if u is equal to like this that is 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.1 whole transpose then we will have rho is equal to 1 by 2 and d will be nothing but diagonal of d1, d2, d3. So, it will be it will be like you know the 1, 2, 3, 4 rest are all zeros. The graph of this circular equation will look like the following in the figure. We look at over here. So, these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like this and you see here this is a thing and there is a one street. So, it is going, it is far away, it is just uh, much up far away. We can see from this figure. So, obtaining the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in the graphical representation, knowing that the roots of f lambda is equal to 0 are located in such specified intervals, we can then apply the bisection method or Newton's method, the way which we do it for the previous cases, to find these roots in each of these intervals. Once a root is found, the corresponding eigenvectors can be obtained from equation 2. However, a more stable way of computing an eigenvector u is as follows. Let d1 dn less than lambda n less than lambda 2 like that dn plus 1 and less than lambda i less than etc. d on less than lambda 1. Compute the ith component in this fashion that is norm of u i that is modulus of u i is nothing but product of j is equal to 1 to n lambda i minus d i all power 1 by 2 and product of j is equal to 1 j not equal to i d i minus d j minus d i. Compute the eigenvectors of d plus u times of u transpose in equation 2. So, the divide and conquer algorithm can be put up in this following form. What is the output you have? The input is a symmetric triadagonal matrix T. So, you will have a symmetric triadagonal matrix T and output is approximate eigenvalues and eigenvectors of T. And in the step 1, the T1 is equal, T is equal to T1 0, 0 T2, then this is the BK times of VV transpose. Where T1 and T2 are given the previous of the slide which we have shown and step 2 is find orthogonal matrices q1 and q2 such that q1 transpose t1 times of q1 is equal to d1 and q2 time transpose t2 q2 is equal to d2 where d1 and d2 are orthogonal matrices. And in the step 3 if you look at we will form a d so that is d1 d2 ok and u is equal to that is diagonal of q1 transpose q2 transpose of v and the step 4 we write it as find the eigenvalues of t by solving the secular equation. So, this is that you do get it. f lambda is equal to 1 plus rho times of summation j is equal to 1 to n u j 2 u j square upon d j minus lambda is equal to 0 and obtain the eigenvectors of d plus u u transpose from equation 2 with u computed by step 5.
So recover the eigenvalues of the vector t if lambda on frame is the eigenvector of matrix D plus rho into u u transpose then the eigenvectors of matrix T are given by like this q1 0 0 q2 q1 prime. So it is very curious to see what is the flop count of this equation. Flop count is assuming that Newton iteration steps cos around about order of n flops the algorithm will require only order of n square flops for all the eigenvalues. The cost of the computing each eigenvector from a computed eigenvalue is the order of n flops, n floating point operations per second. And the Jacobi method is one of the classical methods for computing the eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix is the method is introduced by C. J. Jacobi in 1846. Since a symmetric matrix A can be diagonalized by orthogonal similarity, the idea is to create orthogonal matrices J0, J1, J2, Jk-1 such that the sequence AK defined by A0 is equal to A and AK is equal to J transpose K-1, AK-1, J transpose K-1 for every K is equal to 1, 2, etc. Approaches a diagonal matrix of the form for large values of K. So, in Jacobi method, the orthogonal matrices are of nothing but Givens rotations, but they were originally invented by Jacobi method. These matrices are created successively to make one pair of diagonal entries zeros, one pair at a time. It can be easily verified that for ij entry of the matrix A r plus 1 is equal to j transpose r a r j r can be made zeros simultaneously in the Jacobi method. If a r times of a i j r then will then will have if j 1 times or j i times of i j c s is constructed with c and defined as in this following fashion c is equal to 1 by square root of 1 plus t square where s is equal to c times of t where this t is nothing but sin of tau that is mod of tau plus 1 plus tau square and tau is equal to a i i r minus a r i j by 2 a j r. Unfortunately, the zeros created at an earlier step get destroyed by subsequent steps. However, as in the QR iteration algorithm for the eigenvalues computations, the non-zero entries decreases steadily as the iteration proceeds. Choosing the off diagonal entries for zeros in the classical Jacobi scheme, the indices i and j are chosen so that the entry a j is the largest off diagonal entry in magnitude at each step. It can be shown that the sum of the squares of the off diagonal entries denoted by off diagonal of square of a and we can write in the following fashion that is summation j is equal to 1 to n and uh, this is a square ij decreases at least by the factor 1 minus 2 by n into n minus 1 at each step that is you can write it as of square a minus a square ij less than or equal to 2 upon n into n minus 1 of square of the a. Thus, the classical Jacobi scheme converges at least linearly in practice the convergence is actually a quadratic convergence. Note that implementation of the scheme involves the order of n square such for the largest entry at each step. In practice, a scheme is called the cyclic Jacobi scheme is used in which the off diagonal entries are annihilated in row wise that is 1, 2, 1, 3 like this and so on. This scheme is faster since it does not require off diagonal search and is more accurate the rate of convergence is ultimately becomes a quadratic. So comparison of the symmetric eigenvalues. So if you look at this triadagonal QR iteration, the QR iteration algorithm applied to an n by n symmetric matrix, triadagonal matrix requires 
the order of n square flops to compute all the eigenvalues. However, finding all the eigenvectors require another 6n cube flops approximately. So, if you look at divide and conquer method like the QR iteration algorithm, the divide and conquer algorithm also requires the order of n square flops to compute all the eigenvalues of a symmetric tridiagonal matrix. However, if all the eigenvectors are also desired, this algorithm is more efficient than the QR iteration because it can be shown that the flop count for all eigenvalues is about 4n cube by 3, 4n cube by 3 where n is equal to size of the matrix. As compared to 6n cube needed by the QR iteration algorithm. So, there are several other faster implementations of this popular algorithm. Now, let us look at into bisection method. This method is needs only order of n k if k is the number of eigenvalues are required. So, if the eigenvalues are well separated, the cost of computing the eigenvectors is inversely iteration is also order of m times of k. Thus, the principle it takes only order of n square flops to compute all the eigenvalues of a matrix. So, therefore, it can be concluded that the method is much faster than both QR iteration and QR iteration method. So, in the worst case, when several eigenvalues are clustered together, the cost becomes the order of n cube for inverse iteration. And furthermore, the accuracy of the computed eigenvector is not guaranteed. However, there has been some progress in obtaining the eigenvectors more accurately with not much more than big O of n square flops per eigenvector. The method is best if and only a few eigenvalues are those in the interval are desired. So, the Jacob method is the method also requires the order of n cube flops to compute all the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix A. Not, note that the method does not require tri diagonalization. However, it is in general much slower than other methods. The method Sometimes, however, computes the eigenvalue with a relatively higher accuracy. So, therefore, the conclusion is the divide and conquer method is the fastest algorithm for symmetric matrices if all the eigenvalues eigenvectors are desired. The symmetric QR algorithm with the Wilkinson shift is the fastest practical algorithm for finding all the eigenvalues of a small order a symmetric matrices. So, the bisection method may be used to compute a small number of eigenvalues of a symmetric matrix or a number of eigenvalues in a specified interval. So, today what we learned is, we learned that how actually bisection method can be used and how the divide and conquer algorithm can be used for symmetric matrices. So, I will stop over here. Thank you very, very much for being with me for this interesting lecture. Thank you once again.